how to use maps in En-ROADS. Our great partners over at Probable Futures gave us access to these maps of wildfires and drought and heat. I'm gonna show you how you use them in the simulator. We do it in four ways. First, just to connect this global, sim global simulator to a place, to people in a place. Secondly, to inspire action, because you see where we're headed and we want to avoid that. Third, how much of these damages that are mapped can be prevented? And fourth, what's coming no matter what, so we ought to get ready. The first use is to connect to a place. It's a global model, but people want to know about specific places. So ask them, what are you concerned about? And they may say, extreme heat. And you say, where? Type into search places. Someone says, Belgium. Okay, let's go look at Belgium. Extreme heat days, days above 32C or 90F. We can see in 2100, it's blue. So it's eight to 30. That's where things are headed. Eight to 30 days above. Now, don't just use that number. The pro tip, most important information in this video, is that to compare it to the world, the, the climate for the world that we built around back, say, 25 years ago. Much of our infrastructure was built for a world at 0.8 C globally back in 2000. So you can go and look here. We, in that area, built a buildings and cooling and HVAC systems and all of these things and air conditioning for a world that expected one to seven days, however, and then move it up to 2100, we're headed towards eight to 30. This is the challenge. It's not just that number, it is the gap between 2000 and 2100. Show them that to inspire action. The third use is to show how much we can prevent what you'll do is to go down here and maybe I'll pull up another map so you can see both change. This one I'll pull up uh, wildfires and I opened it up to Nairobi, Kenya. Okay, so then you're going to be engaging people and say, how can we do better where we're going to have renewables and we're going to cut subsidies on fossil fuels and price carbon and energy efficiency and electrification, see the temperature coming down. And slowly you'll see action and changes in these maps as we try to create a world well below two degrees. I'm going to push it a little bit more to get all the way down here, 1.8. Now here's the key, is you're going to be here, you're going to be looking at Belgium in 2100, and then say, here's what we would get if we took action relative to the baseline. See this button here, show baseline. Show baseline, we're headed towards eight to 30 days a year at that temperature, and then click. And then it's now below eight days, just one to seven. So base case, if we take action. Base case, really a lot, many days of warming, if we take action, same over here, where we can say base case versus if we take action and avoid wildfires, show how much better it could be. The fourth way we use it is to get real about the world that's coming no matter what. So even in this 1.8 degree scenario, you can see that these areas should be preparing many of them for eight to 30 days here in France, where there are areas it's better, but still it's not as good as if where as it was back in 2000. So people will say, I want to get ready for a world in 2050. You can then use the map to look around and see how many days should we expect above a certain temperature or for drought or wildfire or heat and humidity. There are three resources for understanding more about the maps. First, just click on the triangle and you can read what the assumptions are, what it's based on, the size of the squares, etc. Then click on this overview of heat and humidity days. This is the article that explains much more background, how to use it, some of the things that I just said.
third back here go to the original source probable futures has a version of this same map right here with a lot more detail so you can go up here and not just see uh, the average temperature but or the average number of days but the range in a cooler year zero at a hotter year 29 and much more information here at the probable future site all right maps and En-ROADS are a great way to localize the experience of a workshop participant also to inspire them to take action show them how much better it could be and to get people ready for what's coming no matter what go get them <laughs>